Cricket Replay. In Cricket Replay today, we replay a classic encounter between England and the West Indies from the year 1973. England had just concluded a 2-0 home series win over New Zealand and were all set to give the West Indies a hard time in the first test at the Oval. Ray Illingworth led the England team for the 29th time with other players being boycott, Amiss, Roop, Fletcher, Tony Gray, Alan Knott, Snow, Arnold, Underwood and debutant Frank Hayes. This was Rohan Kanai's second series as captain of the West Indies. Despite a home series loss against Australia, Kanai was retained as the captain. He was accompanied by Fredericks, Lloyd, Kalicharan, Murray, Gary Sobers, Boyce, Inshan Ali, Lance Kiff and the two debutants Ron Headley and Bernard Julian. West Indies won the toss and looking at their strong batting lineup, they decided to bat first. Oh, and that must be, yes, that's out. Yes, it looked very plumb from here. It was an error of misjudgment as much as anything else from Ron Headley. Then at 47, Fredericks uh, out for a lively, attractive 35. LBW to a good one from Jeff Arnold that moved into him. Oh, that must be close. Yes, it is. It's out. It's the second wicket to fall. The West Indies, Roy Fredericks, the man out. A very good delivery there from Jeff Arnold and looked absolutely plumb. The third wicket to go, Kanhai, was bowled by an absolute trimmer from Tony Gregg, which pitched on middle and just flicked the outside of the off stump for ten. Oh, what a good delivery. A really fine piece of bowling there by Tony Gregg. Rowan Kanhai got an absolute beauty there. That made it 64 for three, and that was the West Indies' lowest point. But then came the terrific stand between Clive Lloyd and Alvin Kalicharan, which completely turned the tide and wrested the initiative away from England. A oh, lovely shot. Gosh, that was a good stroke. Clive Lloyd faces Arnold. And they got again. and Amos was there but it's Greg having a long chase and Karacharan takes three to give him his half century in 115 minutes there's no need to chase that it's an amazing blow that he was never anywhere near it never anywhere near the length and it brings up his thousand runs for the season. Alvin Kalicharan is now 57 and he's made a thousand and two runs in this season's first class cricket. That's four runs. And it brings up the 200. 205 for three. It's there again. Same ball, same shot, four more. Clive Lloyd not hanging around in the 90s. 91 to 95, now on to 99. All these boys on the field, they obviously can't count. Well, this really is absolutely stupid. Oh, short, swung away. Wonderful shot by Clive Lloyd. Six into the crowd. Off volley, fairly smashed through the offside by Clive Lloyd for four more runs. Short, powered away for four runs. Tremendous shot again by Clive Lloyd. That brings up the 200th partnership between these two. A truly magnificent performance by Lloyd and Kelly Turan. 
right now, Arnold coming in with a new ball. And that should be it. Caught behind, really a bad shot to a wide ball from Jeff Arnold. No movement in that at all. A very tired looking shot from Alvin Kalicharan to end this really excellent partnership. Very disappointed with himself. And a short leg just out of the picture there. Into the wind, Jeff Arnold. It's coming straight down the, the ground. And a big shout for LBW. He's given out LBW. My goodness, what a blow. The opening strike for England and Clive Lloyd gone at once. And so Lloyd out for 132 to the first ball of the day. Short one, first bad ball we've seen of the day. Gets the full treatment from Derek Murray. And something at last for the crowd to shout about. Murray hooking it round to mid-wicket for four. 59 minutes play so far this morning. And it's Tony Gregg going to bowl to Garfield Sobers. Ball the first time, really finding the edge of Sober's bat. No, no ball, of course, called there and late reaction. Good shot by Murray. Nice control on drive, not sufficient power to go through to the fence. And he's will cut it off. Nice to see Sobers able to move relatively easily there and take three runs. Half folly. Oh, you have to be quick. A great throw, and he's given him run out. Oh dear, what a tragedy there for Gary Sobers. A magnificent piece of work by Dennis Amis. Picked it up, hit the wicket. Sobers is run out for ten. Pretty useful player to have coming in here uh, at this number. And what a great shot. And he did uh, launch himself at that one. A nice start and a world time push for two and then that lovely stroke through mid on for four to bring up the 300. Derek Murray on 14 is taking strike to Jeff Arnold. And that must be very close indeed cutting back there at uh, Bernard Julian. And the seventh West Indian wicket to fall. <laughs> A blistering stroke that was. Arnold didn't quite have time to get the hand down for it. It might have taken his hand with it. A very powerful stroke indeed from Keith Boyce. Derek Murray now on 28, Arnold the bowler. And that's it, a great catch by Graham Roop at second slip. First opportunity he's had to distinguish himself in that position and once again making no mistake. So fifth wicket for Geoffrey Arnold, Derek Murray the batsman to go, brilliantly caught by Roop at slip and Murray out for 28. taken the first one very quickly indeed fine running there by Boyce is able to make two and that was only a little nudge on the offside so he keeps the strike moves on to 22 Quite an incredible shot there by Keith Boyce. He almost hit it leaning back and it soared into the pavilion here at the Oval. Really a ferocious hitter. 
no question now mid on and mid off and back on the boundary Bad ball there from Greg outside the leg stump, clipped away, and once again he's coming back for the second. Fine running again by Boyce. And this game coming to life again now in the later stages of the West Indies innings. Boyce has already taken ten off this over from Tony Gregg. Realises now he's, he's got to throw the bat with not much support coming. 3.56 now. Pitched up again, driven firmer, they'll just take a single. Aim is out at long on. Short, a magnificent shot again. Pulled away, square of the wicket for four more. That was a little bit of a loosener from John Snow, but the crowd now enjoying every minute of this. So that takes Keith Boyce into the 40s, far and away now. His best score in the Test match, 31 previously against Australia during the course of last winter series. And there's nothing he liked better than to repeat the dose of snow that he gave to Tony Gregg with that really enormous six into the pavilion here. He's turned away to long leg and he's going the first like a 100-yard sprinter. He's coming back for the second and he's made it and he's home. Tremendous effort by the Essex all-rounder from Barbados, Keith Boyce. Look at the crowd, they're on the feet, they've enjoyed every minute of this. Really been some brilliant shots in amongst it all. And not one person venturing to come on the field. This is 11th over on the trot. That's safe. Over Lingworth's head, Greg is the fieldsman. He'll cut that off, but not before the batsman can take three runs. So it's three to Boyce. Good running there. Winston was turning at the same time as Boyce. And those runs brought up to 400. And that must be out. Jeffrey Boy cuts under it. Yes, it's the ninth wicket to fall. This time, Underwood breaking the partnership. Spin being brought on. A slower ball that time to Inchinali. Drew him into trying to hit the ball over long on. And merely skied it to Jeffrey Boycott running around from mid wicket. So it's now 405 for nine. Inchinali was caught Boycott. Old Underwood for 15. And Boyce is still there. 68 not out, joined now by the number 11, Lance Gibbs. And it's Derek Underwood bowling to Boyce. And hammers that away for four runs behind square. Crowd going wild now. A remarkable performance here from Keith Boyce who moves into the 70s to 72. And Eric Underwood, now in his 24th over, he's taken one for 64. It's none for 62 last night. Nice so him. that's it. Trying to work him away on the onside, wide of mid-on, playing across the line. And Boyce is out for an exciting 72. The crowd really rising to him here, and the police coming across to guard against an invasion of the pitch. West Indies all out for 415. Some late surge by Keith Boyce carried the West Indies innings to a healthy 415 runs in the first innings. Boyce was the last man to be dismissed, scoring 72 of 99 balls. However, the man largely responsible for this West Indian total was Clive Lloyd. He scored his career's fifth test century and first on English soil. Jeff Arnold was the only bowler who troubled the mighty West Indies. He finished with the bowling figures of 5 for 113 in 39 overs. Tony Gregg and Derek Underwood picked up two wickets each. 
Will England batsmen be able to cope up with a West Indian pace attack? Find that out right after this break. Welcome back to Cricket Replay. You're watching the first test match between England and the West Indies, played at the Oval in the year 1973. Batting first, West Indies scored a mammoth total of 415 runs. Jeff Boycott and Dennis Amiss came out to open the innings for England. So the start of the England innings, they reply to the West Indies' first innings total of 415. And it's to be Gary Sobers given the new ball. First test match comeback. And Sobers to bowl the first ball of the England innings and he'll be bowling it to Jeffrey Boycott. There's three slips there and a gully. So the first ball from Boyce to Boycott. Good Yorker, almost Yorker. Boycott coming forward, got it on the fall and flipped it away. Mid off. So he's off the mark now. Nicely put away to the offside by Amos. Drifting through there for four runs. There'll be a hope of cutting it off. And he's out. And a little bit unfortunate there, Dennis Amos getting mixed up a little bit in two minds whether to let it go or play it in the end he jabbed down and it, but only succeeded in playing it off not uh, at all where it was intended but it'll be two runs to Roop and they might get three if he wants something for the misfield He's up, put it down. Would have been a fine catch. Clive Lloyd got both hands to it. Great anticipation. A total 75 and Roop was on six. Oh, he's put that down. That's two chances off Boyce in two overs. Another difficult one. 95 for one. Roop on nine. That's been out, Amos, 29. Chopped it onto the stumps. Boyce's wicket. Second he's taken. That's Boycott's 50. Gave the one chance. A very difficult one to uh, Lance Gibbs at third slip. Eight for two. Another spectator on the field. We can do without him. In Shinali. He's in beautiful position there. That really was a good stroke. This young fellow not caring that it's towards the end of the day. A lot of players in their first test match would have been playing defensively. A lovely stroke for six over midwicket. Sets himself now in Chinali again. out good catch 
fine catch, Clive Lloyd and Sobers getting the breakthrough this morning for the West Indies. Frank Hayes, who's never really convincing this morning in the face of some splendid bowling. Sobers and Boyce really have bowled well. And now they've got that breakthrough. Frank Hayes caught by Lloyd off Sobers for 16. It's 134 for three, and the England defences are breached. That's safe. It's out of Ron Headley's reach. Magnificent stroke. Really did get under that and hit it away beautifully. Six runs. A beautifully timed stroke. Sober start the day with seven overs, three maidens, no wicket for 18. He's now got 15 overs, eight maidens, one for 23. That can't be too far away. It's certainly worth a shout, I should think. Bernard Julian again from the Vauxhall end, Fletcher to face. it it's Clive Lloyd's done it again a really great catch there by the big man third slip almost an identical dismissal to the one that caused the downfall of Frank Hayes so Keith Fletcher gone for 11 the fourth English wicket fall in at 163 the appeal and is out boycott's gone at 97 a little deflection, but not sufficient to get him the three runs he was looking for. Murray moving across smartly, taking the catch down the leg side. A great triumph then for the West Indies. Just out of reach of Clive Lloyd. That must be out. What an extraordinary thing for Ellingworth to do. A late swinger from Gary Sobers with his second new ball. And Ellingworth is the sixth wicket to fall. Sobers gets his victim with the second new ball. And another England batsman not playing a stroke. It's out. Tony Gregg, another breakthrough with the new ball. Keith Boyce takes the wicket. And Gary Sobers falling away with the ball there and completing the catch. And look at the delight from the West Indians. That was a very sharp chance. Now Keith Boyce bowling his first ball to John Snow. And a beautiful delivery. First ball, the off stump cartwheel back towards wicketkeeper Derek Murray. The spectators erupt again. 247 for eight. That must be the closest to a hat-trick ever. Unfortunately, no ball was called by umpire Constant. But that ball almost cut Arnold in two. It really did cut back from off stump and lift it over the top of middle. Short one again. It's high in the air. Kelly Charan's underneath it. And he's caught it, fine catch down at long leg by Alvin Kelly-Turana. Another wicket for, Jeff, for Keith Boyce and Geoffrey Arnold out. And 
Boyce racing down the wicket to join his teammates. His fifth wicket for the first time in a test match. And following his tremendous innings of 72 yesterday, it's certainly been Keith Boyce's match so far. So was keeping going wonderfully well now in his 23rd over. And that's it. And down Underwood out, first ball, caught it forward, short leg. Sobers wrapping things up. And what a good day he's had here. Might have missed out with the bat in this innings, but three wickets to him and a fine catch at slip. And this is a really excellent performance by the West Indies. England lost their last five wickets for just ten runs as they were eventually all out for 257. Jeff Boycott played superbly at the top of the order but was unlucky to miss his 100 by just three runs. Debutant Frank Hayes did manage to hang in for almost an hour on the crease, but could score just 16 runs. For West Indies, after scoring some quick runs while batting, Keith Boyes did it while bowling as well. He backed five wickets for 70 runs from 22 overs. Gary Sobers, who opened the bowling for the West Indies, picked up three wickets for 27. So West Indies got a first innings lead of 158 runs. We have gone back to the year 1973 in cricket replay today. West Indies are touring England and they face each other in the first test of the three-match series at the Oval. With a lead of 158 runs in the first innings, West Indian openers Roy Fredericks and Ron Headley come out to bat. A oh, good ball there by Snow. Moving away from Fredericks. Only a little toucher away from it. It's handsomely away over pitch ball driven firmly past Derek Underwood, chasing it down to the Vauxhall end. And it's coming back for the third run. So a little tough squat opener from Guiana off the mark for three. That's it, a good catch there by Young Hayes at first slip. Fredericks, the first man out. Arnold taking the wicket. The first West Indian wicket down with a score on nine. Now Arnold striking again for England as he has done so consistently all through the summer. Short swung again by Hadley, beautiful shot, kept well down on top of it, control, four more. And great bowler that Jeff Arnold has been, he really can't afford to bowl short on this wicket. Hasn't got the pace ever to really bowl the bouncer successfully. Fine again by Headley. Off the lake this time. So runs coming at a grand rate here for West Indies on the 31, just in the eighth over. Oh, and that's it. And no need for anybody to ask an umpire's decision. Ron can I on his way. Constant never any need to raise his finger. Giving him a bounce, the first ball, and hit him. But he's got to get it very high to hit him on the head there. Big tall man, took it on the shoulder. Tony Gregg, it's got it, and it's worked. Snow, I'm sure he set a trap there. Every so often, firing that one down the leg side. Good bowling there from John Snow. Tony Gregg perfectly positioned. Extra man on the leg side for Arnold. Just two slips. He's got a short leg, a square leg, and a mid-on. Deep long leg back. Third man back. 
cover point fairly square and mid off very deep. So Ron Headley, who 40 not out overnight, facing his first ball. Steering it away down to third man. Gentle single, bringing up the 100. So the crowd into action early on in the morning's play. A pause for the West Indies 100. It's taken 155 minutes. Really asking for trouble. Another bouncer pulled away for four by Kelly Turan. It's quite unusual to see Jeff Arnold resort into these tactics. He's never been a great believer in the bouncer. He's always used it very sparingly and normally to good effect. I don't know whether the reason is that he was on the receiving end of one or two himself when he went into bat. Bowled him. Well, it's seen there that Headley missed a straight ball, but it's a wonderful side at the far end. There's only one stump left standing. What a great sight for a quick bowler. Short, hooked, not very well, but it's going to give four runs. Just out of Illingworth's reach in that deep gully position. They missed in the fielding. Kelly Turan coming back for a second. They're throwing to Sober's end. But he's safely home. It takes Alvin Kelly Turan on to 50. So Kelly Turan adding 50 at the moment to the 80 he made in the first innings. He's moved very briskly indeed this morning. Added 27 in just half an hour. Good ball. This picture in front of Root. Yes, so for four runs. And that's a beautiful shot. Struck away firmly in the middle of the bat that time. Another short one from Jeff Arnold. Fine drive. A lot of wrist in that. Hardly picked the bat up at all, but flicked it away with immense power. Delight of the West Indian section there. West Indies lead now extended past the 300 mark, 303, four wickets down. A great diving effort by Root. Not quite sure whether that was off the glove or the shoulder. But John Snow a little bit disappointed, so it could well have been off the glove. In fact, the glove is off now and he's shaking his hand. Hayes can't get it, four runs. It's a bit short, that one, nearly worth giving Cutter Turan time to get back on the back foot. Been trying to cramp him for room. And bowl him. Bowl him the same stroke he tried against Underwood. 
good bowling from Illingworth. He's bowled well out there. Not much spin, but keeping it tight. And Cully Charan hitting right across that one. And Underwood asking for Illingworth to go a little wider. That's out. It's well caught, in fact, by Graham Root because he was on the way forward there. It's also well bowled by Underwood, the one that comes on with the arm. No spin there, and Murray was waiting for the spin, and it's the sixth wicket to go down. Tremendous shot by Sobers. Great way to start the afternoon. Belton Illingworth through the covers, bringing up the 200. Cutting Underwood away for yet another. Three fours he's taken now of his teammate down in Kent. So Julian onto 12, this total onto 204. Yet another boundary swung away by Julian. Really climbing into Underwood here. Already hit him now for four fours. And that's his total. 16 to Julian. An enormous blow again by Bernard Julian. Six runs into the crowd. So four fours under six already in his 23 runs. And he's clean bowled this time, having a trying to repeat the shot with which he struck Illingworth for six earlier in the over. So it didn't last long, but it was full value while it did. There goes the big one, swung away. An enormous blow by Keith Boyce, just dropping short of six. One always wonders how long he can really play Porky and push it up and down the line. Caught him in two minds and changed his mind. Illingworth takes another wicket. He's set off to try and blast him wide of mid on again. Then tried to change his mind, got caught in midstream and gave Illingworth his third wicket. Beautiful shot. Over pitch wide, Sobers waited for it, hit it square in the one vacant spot in the offside it was possible to find. There's his 50. But take it where he liked, pushed it away to mid on. So a delighted crowd welcoming this Sobers 50 on his return to the test match scene here at the Oval. Applause too from his opponent, the England team. Very generous and their applause here for Gary Sobers. That's cut away, short one, inching off the mark with four runs. Good little shot there, gave himself room. Nobody back there, they'd all come up. <laughs> well, 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 Gary Sobers can't believe it. He can't believe it. Hit it high up on the bat, Derek Underwood running in at midwicket, taking a one-handed catch. Final now to Gibbs. That's it, caught behind, Lance Gibbs is having a big swing, he must think they've got enough.
so West Indies got out for 255 in their second innings, giving England a winning target of 414 runs. Elvin Karicharan was the top scorer for the visitors, scoring 80 of 139 balls. Gary Sobers too had a good outing in the middle, scoring a half century. For England, it was once again Jeff Arnold who proved to be the most successful bowler, picking up three crucial wickets for 49 runs. John Snow and Ray Illingworth too backed three wickets each while giving away 50 and 62 runs respectively. Will England be able to achieve the target of 414 runs in the second innings? Find that out after a short break. Welcome back to Cricket Replay, where we are replaying the first test match between England and the West Indies, played at the Oval in the year 1973. The match has reached its climax. England openers Jeff Boycott and Dennis Amis come out to bat as England look to score 414 runs to win the test match. So here today, Sobers having made his, uh, his runs in the second innings, has been discarded. Lovely shot by Boycott. He's beautifully in position for that. Really good stroke. And Boycott now goes on to five. The England total is five. Amos is not yet off the mark. And what a lovely stroke. And he hasn't moved, Boycott. The fieldsmen are waiting for the crowd to throw the ball in. It's a good start from Jeff Boycott. And that's four more. They need to chase that. It's a good stroke too. Boycott angling the bat. And square driving it. Well, it was just behind point. It's out. It's a good catch too. My word, that went fast. And Kenai was off balance when he took it. It was a good catch. A nice breakthrough for Boyce and the West Indians. Still going to be Julian from the Vauxhall end. Beautiful shot by Graham Root. Really picked it up and timed it to perfection. That shot's going to do him a lot of good. Keith Boyce is the man down there. No chance at all of cutting it off. And that's it, Court and Bowl, he hasn't missed this one. Boycott out, a tremendous roar from the crowd. A West Indian contingent in the air, on the feet. That's the man they wanted to see go, and it's Gibbs who's done it. So, Geoffrey Boycott out, a bit of low that to England hopes. Out for 30. It's over Inchin's head. That time, Gibbs beat Roop in the flight. The batsman realising he'd been beaten, gave it everything when he found himself a yard short. And he's done it, not over that drive, that's well bowled. A superb piece of bowling there from Lance Gibbs. There are five on the on side now for Inchinali to bowl to Fletcher. Four runs, not even Lloyd could uh, stop the full pace of that. Got a finger to it. It's in the air and Kalicharan has got it. Not a good shot by Fletcher. Hitting it in the air, and Kelly Charan coming around and taking it very nicely on the run away at deep backward square leg. No need to chase that one either. Gibbs trying flight and spin and everything he can muster out there. Kenai has got it. The wrong one, Greg didn't pick it. 
the West Indian captain takes this vital wicket and spectators rushing on the field that's close yes indeed Underwood there pushing forward only a matter of I suppose six inches at the most and in the moment it hit the pad it looked to be a very very close thing well, that's the 50 short one pulled away to deep square leg settling for the single takes it onto the 50 mark his first 50 in test match cricket and what a very good one it's been surely the forerunner of many more for Frank Hayes in England in 115 minutes seems that he spins his googly a little bit more than his Chinaman it's the googly in fact spinning away from the right hander which has worried most of the Englishmen and then with onto that drop short big open gap on the offside and put away conclusively for four runs first boundary to right Illingworth that brings up the 150 four runs it's just the spot of course that Lance Gibbs really can't afford the bowl with the field set in such an attacking manner one West Indies not yet been able to make this breakthrough and that's done it now left out the leg stump Lingworth who's wandered over once or twice all on the field again the West Indians players themselves asking them to leave the field and they're coming from both sides now they're really coming over the wicket again done a noble job there and that's LBW up goes umpire Spencer's finger Alan Knott turns round looks where he was but the umpire no hesitation at all in giving Alan Knott out a wry smile on his face as he walks away and that's it that's the hundred slightly edged stroke finally glance and what a performance by this young player Frank Hayes playing in his first test match the West Indians giving him a marvelous ovation they're coming along to shake him by the hands so too are the spectators who we can do without and Hayes goes on to 101 he is the first Lancastrian ever to make a century on his test debut the 13th Englishman to achieve the feat since the war the others to have done it SC Griffith Billy Griffith the secretary of MCC against West Indies and Peter May Arthur Milton and John Hampshire fine stroke didn't quite get that and Clive Wood will cut it off and Hayes will look for three and will get it a lovely throw by Clive Lloyd short and he's caught Caught by Ron Headley at square leg, just behind the square leg umpire. So only one wicket now for the West Indies bowlers to get. And another invasion of the pitch. Being shooed off by the West Indies players. John Snow off the mark, wide of Clive Lloyd. Only one run in it. And that acrobatic throw off balance. Clive Lloyd and Keith Boyce both having quite tremendous arms. 
19 over scott with the second new ball and the man of the hour from the west indies point of view putting everything he has into this bowling dripping with sweat this morning under a hot sun sustaining a fine pace plenty of hostility begging what life he can out of this docile pitch which really has has no bounce in it for the bowlers not enough bounce anyway Morris Foster coming on as 12th man for Gary Sobers. So, John Snow really fenced around. Five slips or four slips in a gully. Short leg. Boyce to Snow. And the short game and it's all over. 255 out. And the players really rushing for cover as the pitch is invaded here. And some of them will hardly make, will hardly make it. Well, England scored exactly the same number of runs which West Indies had scored in their second innings. But that wasn't enough to deny visitors a 158-run victory. Surprisingly, it was the debutant Frank Hayes who led English fight back, scoring an unbeaten 106 runs. Ray Illingworth, too, stayed for almost two hours on the crease, but couldn't get enough support from the other end. For West Indies, it was once again Keith Boyce who did most of the damage. After getting a fiver in the first innings, he backed six wickets for 77 in the second. Lance Gibbs took three for 61. So West Indies won the first test of the three-match series by 158 runs and went one up in the series. Rowan Kanai got the taste of victory for the very first time as the West Indian captain. That's it for today's episode. Cricket Replay will be back with another classic encounter from the years gone by. Goodbye for now.